It's amazing what a man will do to himself over a woman, and still more amazing what a woman will do to herself over a man. This story happened in Virginia City, Montana Territory. <laughs> Frontier Gentlemen. Here with an Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual stories. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territories. In just one minute, we will bring you this latest report from the Frontier Gentleman. What are you stopping here for, Clark? The country club is still a half mile away. I know, Scarlett, but I don't want to drive up to the club in this low-priced car. But the snow is six inches deep and I'm wearing my ballerina slippers. Well, you'll just have to hoof it, baby. I'm not driving any further. And you're much too big for a piggyback. Oh, the snow is cold. Take bigger steps. Oh, that won't help. Why don't you get a big car like a swept wing Dodge? A Dodge? I can't afford a big car like that. Oh, yes, you can. Even though Dodge is a big car, it's priced below 59 different models of the low-priced field. What? You mean I can own a big swept-wing Dodge for less than I paid for my car? That's right. And you get all that big car roominess and big car luxury. With a Dodge, you get all the car you're paying for. Okay, Scarlett. Let's forget the Dodge, dear, and go see our Dodge dealer. Oh, wonderful, darling. On these cold feet, who could dance anyway? <laughs> Now, starring John Daner, this is the story of J.B. Kendall, Frontier Gentleman. Virginia City, Montana Territory, was particularly noted for three things. It's gold, Henry Plummer and his band of outlaws, and the vigilantes. The vigilantes disposed of the plumbers and were replaced by a more lawful authority, so that by the time I arrived, only the gold remained, and of course those who sought it, the miners. They filled the town day and night, spending their hard or easily won money in saloons, gambling houses, and hurdy-gurdy establishments. I was attracted to one of these on the night of my second day in Virginia City. It was a brilliantly lit saloon called Skinner's, and outside was a large sign proclaiming the appearance of Miss Eulalia Robinson. I went inside. from shooting six guns in the establishment because the next man that does it is going to get thrown out on his saddle. With your kind permission, I have the honor of presenting the world-famous actress, Miss Eulalia Robinson. She has appeared before the crown heads of Europe and honors us with a presence tonight by a special appointment to Her Majesty, the Queen of England. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Henry Irvin's leading lady, Miss Eulalia Robinson. <laughs> Miss Robinson will give us a scene from William Shakespeare's play, Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face. Else would a maiden blush be paint my cheek. <laughs> For that which thou hast heard me speak tonight, fain would I dwell on form. Fain, fain deny what I 
She was in her late thirties. Not a good actress, not even beautiful. But her manner, the dignity of carriage, created an illusion of beauty which captivated her audience. She remained on the stage for a solid hour, and by the time she was finished, I could see that every man in that saloon was completely taken by her. And more than one imagined himself to be hopelessly in love. <laughs> I want to meet her. Who do? Hey, partner, wait for me. Mr. Skinner? Yeah? My name is Kendall. What? Uh, Kendall. Kendall? Yes, that's right. I'd like to meet Miss Robinson. Yeah, you and a hundred more. He'll tear the place down. Now, I'm a correspondent for the London Times, a uh, newspaper. Newspaper man? Yes. Uh, uh, sure, come on. Duck under here. How'd you like it? That's real culture, huh? Yeah, she's... Quite a success. Yes, she sure is. What, uh, what paper do you say you write for? London Times. Was well, that so? Well, Miss Robinson will get a kick out of that. You and her both coming from England. Yes? Come in. Oh, that was just fine, Miss Robinson. Real fine. Say, this is Mr. Kendall. He writes on the London Times. Mr. Kendall. How do you do? May I present my business associate, Mr. Grimes? How are you, Mr. Grimes? I guess you folks have plenty to talk about. I'll go on back and get the boys quieted down. Virginia City never heard anything like you gave us tonight, Miss Robinson. Oh, thank you, Mr. Skinner. Not at all. I'll see you later. Well, won't you sit down, Mr. Kendall? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, Kendall, you got uh, identification or something? Proving you're a correspondent? Uh, not on me, no. I don't think it really matters, Well, James. it does to me. You know what I mean, Kendall. Miss Robinson is popular. A lot of fellas like to come busting in and make any excuse, you know what I mean. I gotta watch out for her interests. I understand. And she's kind of tired right now. Why don't you let her go to tomorrow? If you would rather, Miss Robinson? No, not at all. I'd rather enjoy being interviewed tonight. And I say it's not a good idea. You're being extremely rude, James. Perhaps you'd care to take supper with me, Mr. Kendall. Why, well, I'd be delighted. No. No? No, no, she's not gone. I hope you'll forgive him, Mr. Kendall. He thinks that every man who looks at me is thinking dire and dreadful thoughts. <laughs> My intentions are completely honorable, Mr. Grimes. Lately. I don't want I... to discuss it anymore, James. Now, both of you, please wait outside. I must change my clothes. I shan't be a moment, Mr. Kendall. Uh, listen, Kendall. I'm sorry I acted the way I did, but if I don't keep an eye on her, nobody's going to. You know what I mean? I think so. I mean, nothing personal, but uh, as her business manager, I've got to take care of things. Now, she gets awful tired traveling around this way. Best thing for her right now is to go back to the hotel and get some sleep. As a business manager, Mr. Grimes, I should think you'd be happy to have a newspaper interview. Oh, sure, sure I am. But you know how these actresses are. They're like kids. They don't even know what's good for them. I hadn't been aware. Well, take my word for it. So you go on ahead, and I'll, I'll tell her you see her tomorrow. Under the circumstances, I'm afraid she'd think it was rather impolite, don't you? Uh, why not wait until she comes out? Well, all right, we'll make it tonight. A nice quiet supper at the hotel, three of us. Mr. Grimes... I get the distinct impression that for some reason or other you don't want me to be alone with Miss Robinson. Am I right? I'm her business manager. So you said. And she doesn't talk to anyone unless I'm around. Strange, I got the impression that she didn't want you around. I don't care what you think. I'm coming along. If you don't like it, no inter... There! That didn't take long, did it? Are we ready, Mr. Kendall? Yes. Laylee, you're going back to the hotel. Good night, and... James. I'll see you in the morning. We walked down the street to the hotel. She talked about some of her experiences in the territory, rather nervously, I thought, seeming almost deliberately to avoid her background of successes in England. I ordered champagne with dinner, and I could see that rather than making her feel more at ease, the drink only increased her anxiety. I'm afraid that James is right, Mr. Kendall. I must be tired. The champagne makes me feel quite giddy, but I will have just a tiny drop more. Of course. You know, James is very angry with me. 
I gather that. He's a jealous man. You wouldn't think so, would you? But he is. I don't think I blame him. He has no reason to be. We're only business associates. It's not as though we were married or anything. James doesn't believe in marriage. He says it deadens one. Do you think so? I don't know. I've never been married. Mm. My work hasn't allowed for it. Did you meet Grimes in England? Oh, no. No, uh, that was in Boston. He saw me perform and asked to represent my interests. I see. Oh, he'll be very angry about this. Me being with you tonight. May I ask you something? Please. Why are you afraid of him? Afraid? Oh, afraid of James? How utterly ridiculous. Does it show so very clearly? Yes. May I have some more champagne? You know I'm not English, don't you? Yes. I never played with Henry Irving. Never saw England. Never did any of the things they say I did. I didn't think so. By appointment to Her Majesty. James thought that sounded fine. He took it from a bottle of Scotch whiskey. <laughs> Do you know what I am, Mr. Kendall? I'm a liar. My whole life is a lie. I'm not even a good actress. I was completely charmed by your performance. How sweet. How gentlemanly and nice you are. Mr. Kendall, you're terribly attractive. You're the most attractive man I've ever met. No. No, that's not true. My husband was the most attractive man. You see, I lied about that too. You are married. I was. James is always afraid I'll tell someone. Why? Well, the, the marriage didn't end very nicely. Why do you tell me? <laughs> Too much champagne. Mm, I don't think so. I'm tired, then. I wish I could cry. Do you know, Mr. Kendall, I haven't been able to cry for three years. And there are so many tears. The shots had come from outside. Just for a moment, I saw a shadowy figure at the broken window. Then it was gone in the night. Miss Robinson was lying on the floor. A thin line of blood ran from the corner of her mouth. She was unconscious. In a moment, we return to Frontier Gentlemen. Today on CBS Radio's Suspense, Vanessa Brown and Jim Amici will co-star in Affair at Loveland Pass, a Western thriller with a psychological twist. Exciting dramas waiting for you, too, on yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Join us on most of these same stations later today as action-packed stories come your way on CBS Radio's Suspense and yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now we return you to the Anthony Ellis production of Frontier Gentlemen. I just heard. Who did it? I'm not sure, Mr. Skinner. The doctor's on his way. I'll be here in a few minutes. Oh, she doesn't look good. I think the bleeding stopped. Boys down in the saloon are mad. Words got around here in a lynching mood. Sheriff's trying to ease him down. And Mr. Skinner, was was Mr. Grimes there? I didn't see him. Uh, I just wondered. I guess he ought to be told. He's staying down at the Nugget Hotel. Yes, it might be a good idea. Well, I, I'll go on down myself. Now, listen, Mr. Kendall. If there's anything she needs, you sing out. Anything at all. One of my boys will be outside. You just say the word. Right. I'll be back. What a strange feeling. Miss Robinson? No pain at all. I've always thought there would be. The doctor is coming. I don't really mind, you know. 
don't talk. Funny. I never believed him. He always threatened to do something like this. Dr. Todd, where's the wound, please? Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, kindly wait outside, sir. Yes, sir. I'm Dave. Skinner told me to wait. What's the doc say? Nothing yet. I'd sure like to get my hands on that feller that done it. Yeah. I imagine a lot of us would. She's a lady. A fine lady. Not like them hurdy gurdies around here. It don't matter one of them stops a piece of lead. She real bad hurt? Pretty bad. And you figure it was some crazy liquored up son of a gun, don't you? I, I don't know if he was drunk or not. I... I mean, the fellas would come to see how the lady is. We don't know yet. There's more downstairs. We just wanted to know we're going to get the son of a gun that dry golf, sir. Doc Todd come yet? He's in there now. Well, you give him this. There's $300 of better gold dust than that. You tell Doc he pulls her through, he'll get another like it. The boys wanted to know they're with her. Sure. I'll tell her. You do that. I got it. A couple of dollars. That goes for me, too. Give it to the doc. I will. I can't operate yet. She's lost too much blood. She's gonna be all right, huh, doc? Don't ask fool questions, boy. I'm not God. Right now, she's asleep. Well, you're... You're Kendall, aren't you? Yes. Lucky for her, you were around. If she lost any more blood, she'd be dead. Well... You might as well get some shut eye. I'll stay with her. I left the hotel and went out into the street. There were 50 or 60 men standing about, quietly waiting. I told them all that I knew. Then I saw Mr. Skinner hurrying up. He motioned to me, and we walked away from the crowd. Grimes. Couldn't find him. Oh? Hotel clerk said he hadn't seen him all night. Now, I've been thinking. Is there something wrong between these two? I heard arguing this afternoon in her dressing room over at the saloon. I didn't think anything of it then, but with this... I, I think we'd better find him, Mr. Skinner. He did it? I don't know, but it's possible. I'll get some of the boys. Uh, no. What's the matter? Are you a friend of his? You trying to protect him? Neither one, but all they need is an excuse. If they even suspect someone, they'll hang him. I prefer things more legal. He's a killer. We've handled that kind before in Virginia City. Miss Robinson is not dead. Now, what I suggest is that you talk to some of the men who aren't likely to take matters into their own hands. Tell them we're trying to find Grimes. If he doesn't know what's happened to Miss Robinson, they can bring him back here. Then what? We'll let the sheriff handle it. All right. But I'll tell you, Kendall, if he puts up a fight, I want to be there. It'll be a pleasure to shoot him. The search began. At first, only a handful, picked by Skinner, knew what they were looking for. But the word spread, and with it, rumor. Grimes was the man. Grimes had done it. In an hour, every man who knew or cared about what had happened was a hunter. The quarry, innocent or guilty, was James Grimes. And it was obvious that if found, he'd have very little chance of standing trial. At about three o'clock in the morning, I returned to Miss Robinson's room. Any change, Doctor? No. They get the fellow that did it? Not yet. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? How come a man would want to kill a woman like this? She's the way I remember a woman should be. Why don't you get a cup of coffee, Doctor? I'll stay with her until you come back. I think I will. I'll stretch my legs a minute. Huh? Turn around, Kendall. Don't move. You look a little worse for wear, Grimes. Well, they're after me. They're trying to kill me. Any reason why they shouldn't? Is she dead? No. I warned her. I've been warning her what had happened. Put away the gun. And get myself killed? You'll be safer with me than the mob outside. You? 
You're the trouble, the reason for everything. It's been men like you everywhere we go, every town she has to find someone. I warned her, I told her I wasn't going to stand it any longer. Well, I heard a different reason. A different reason? What did she tell you? About her husband. An unhappy marriage. She said that? Told you about her husband? Yes. You want to know what really happened? She had a husband, all right. In Boston. I didn't know it at the time. I met her. I fell in love. She went away with me. After we were married, she told me. She... She is your wife? Surprising. Look at her. It's another one of her little ways. She thinks it's better if people don't know. She thinks I don't know why she wants it that way. I guess you could say we killed her husband. He committed suicide after she left him. Oh, you don't know. You don't know what it's been like. But I told her what I'd do if she went after another man. I'm sorry. No. It doesn't matter anymore. I hope she dies. Then I won't have to feel these things. If she dies, they'll hang you. Yeah. Mm. Mm. James? Laley. I'm sorry, Laley. Such a jealous boy. I never meant anything. Oh, don't, don't, Laley. I like to flirt. That's all. A woman likes to flirt. It doesn't mean anything. Mr. Kendall knows that. Can't you stop acting? Even now, can't you stop? Listen to him, Mr. Kendall. Has he been telling you what a terrible woman I am? I suppose it's true. But you're not much of a man, James. Really? You don't have to listen to this crime. Oh, kill her. Come outside. Kill no, her. no, you don't. Give don't. me the gun. Give me the gun. Really? Really? She's dead. Give me my gun. I can't. You'll get a trial. Perhaps they'll understand. There'll be no trial. No, Grimes. Come back. Grimes. Grimes! I think I was rather glad I hadn't stopped Grimes when he went through the window. They killed him. But in this case, perhaps it was better than a public trial and hanging. Miss Eulalia Robinson and James Grimes were buried side by side in Virginia City, Montana Territory. <laughs> Frontier Gentlemen was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars John Daner as J.B. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Jeanette Nolan, Larry Dobkin, Harry Bartell, Jack Moyles, and Jim Nusser. Music was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Now stay tuned for the Ford Road Show to be followed by the CBS News over most of these same stations. Join us again next week for another report from the Frontier Gentlemen. John Wall speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.